YouTube channel and welcome to my first book video of 2024. Before the video even starts, I just want to say a quick disclaimer. I am not a booktuber or a book talker. I don't even consider myself a proper reader because like you can literally go check my Goodreads and see all the books that I've read. I have not read a lot. So in my head, I'm like, I feel like I don't already have like valid opinions about books. I don't know. I can't explain it. I don't know how to explain what I'm trying to say, but basically I've not read a lot of books. So if you think my opinions are bad, that is probably why. Okay. But anyway, for today's video, I'm going to show you all the books that I read in January. I read a total of four books and one novella, so technically five books. And I'm just going to sit here and talk about them because I can. I don't know why that was so aggressive. I'm so sorry. Okay, but first on the list, we have Verity by Colleen Hoover. I actually read this in December, <laughs> but I thought I'd just add it into this video because it's kind of the book that got me back into reading after my, what was it, eight month reading slump. Yeah, but this is a psychological thriller. It follows the main character, Lowen, and she is a struggling author, as the back of the book says. And she is hired by Jeremy Crawford to finish Verity Crawford's, you get the title of the book now, book series, because she is no longer able to finish it, which you find out later in the book why. And she ends up going to the house just to kind of go through all Verity's notes and check if she's maybe started writing any of the other books. And just throughout the time that she's staying there, a bunch of creepy stuff starts happening and there is a huge plot twist at the end. Everyone kept telling me like this huge plot twist at the end. Throughout reading the book, I was like, this plot twist is like so obvious, but it actually just seems like it is a very obvious plot twist when in reality, a different plot twist happens. This was a five stars for me, maybe even like a six star because first of all, I love thrillers. I love scary things. It's just so interesting to me. And the way this book had me just like sitting like this for probably like 10 minutes after finishing it. I would definitely recommend checking the trigger warnings before you read this book because I wouldn't necessarily say it's gory. There's just a bunch of things that you read about and it's quite dark. But yeah, I read this book and then I also read the extra chapter version because there's the original and then I didn't actually buy the book that has the extra chapter because it's like 400 rand. I would say maybe if you plan on buying this book, then buy the extra chapter version. But if you already have the book, trust me, it's not worth it. The extra chapter is definitely good and I would definitely recommend reading it because it gave me a very different perspective on the characters. Like my opinions about them completely changed. But you can find the extra chapter version somewhere online. And then after this, I was finally back in the mood to start reading. But after this, I read Hard Bones by Colleen Hoover. This book follows Bea, I think. That's how you say her name. I'm not sure. Please correct me if I'm wrong. But this book follows the main character, Bea. And in the beginning of the book, her mom passes away from an overdose and she ends up having to go live with her dad because first of all, she's underaged, I believe. I think she's like 17. And also she was very, very poor because her mom was Attic. So she had to go live with her dad in Texas in his wife's beach house. So this is a very summer book. I would definitely recommend reading this during summer. And it sounds very boring explaining it, but reading it, it's a lot more fun because the rest of the book is basically just her experience at this beach house. Okay, I completely forgot to say this in the video, but this is actually a romance book. It doesn't necessarily just explain like her story at this beach house. Like it is very much a romance book. And it was just a really fun book to read because there wasn't that much going on and once again there was a huge plot twist at the end i actually knew what the plot twist was because i had heard somewhere what the plot twist was i can't remember where but i'd heard and i wasn't planning on reading it since i already knew what the plot twist was but while we we're on holiday i was so desperate to read another book and this was the only book in the bookshop that we were at that seemed appealing so i just took it and i'm very happy i did but yeah this book is probably like a 3.5 maybe four stars because i did really like the storyline but at the end there was like a i want to say a bunch of plot twists but like a bunch of small little stuff that you end up finding out that makes like one big plot twist and i'd heard like the main part of the plot twist if that makes sense i didn't hear like all the little other stuff and one of the little other stuff just i wouldn't say it didn't make sense but it was just like <sighs> It's really hard to explain. This is why I can't make book videos because I can't express what I'm feeling. It was just like kind of fake almost. I know it's a book and it is fake. I don't know. It was just like really random almost. Like it was just a very interesting plot twist, which personally I did not like, but I did really like the book and I absolutely loved the characters. Like it is almost a month later and I'm still thinking about these characters. And then next I read Shatter Me by Treya Muff Muffy. Please. Tell me if I'm pronouncing that wrong. This book follows the main character, Juliet. And as it says on the top here, it's like crossed out, but it says her touch is lethal. So basically if she touches someone, it kills them. Like not immediately, like she's just not gonna go like 
touch and it's immediately gonna kill them it's gonna hurt them but like I think she has to touch them for at least like three seconds before it like actually kills them and I actually bought this book I think back in like March of 2023 and I started reading it and I put it down because it wasn't bad it just wasn't that intriguing to me personally I have a very bad attention span so that's nothing about the book it's it's me. So I just decided to put the book down. But at the beginning of the book, I immediately thought, yes, I'm going to love this. So I already bought the novella and the second book. So earlier this year, I was like, you know what? I'm going to pick it up, finish it, finish the novella, finish the second book. So that I didn't just like waste a bunch of money. And I finished the book and I absolutely loved it. I literally put the book down right before it started getting interesting. Like literally, I can't explain how frustrated I am because I could have finished the series by now. But yeah, this was a good four stars for me. I actually really, really enjoyed it. A lot of people said that the first and second book are like kind of bad and then around like the third book, it starts getting really good. But personally, I really, really enjoyed the first book. Like, as I said, the beginning was a little bit like, I wouldn't say slow, it just wasn't that intriguing to me personally. But later on, it started getting really interesting. But yeah, I really like the characters. I'm very invested in the romance. By the way, there is a very, very heavy sub- plot that's not what you say like that is basically the plot it's not even like a sub do you call it a slub S slub <laughs> i'm not sure but but there's a lot of romance in this book it's probably like 50 percent of the plot it's like a whole love triangle thing and i loved juliet's thoughts in this book it's really hard to explain but i feel like a lot of this book is just full of like like almost delusional thoughts not delusional but a bunch of little small thoughts that she has randomly gets put in but not constantly and there's also a lot of parts where stuff like this whole page is scratched out which is quite interesting because then she thinks something that she knows she shouldn't be thinking and then it gets scratched out i don't know and i just found that really really interesting the next book i read was destroy me that is inside of unite me this is basically a novella so you read this right after you read the first book and it's basically from warner's perspective which is one of the love interests he's also the villain in the book that's why it's also so interesting but it's from his point of view at around the time of the beginning of the second book but it doesn't necessarily spoil the beginning of the second book and it was just so interesting to read out of his point of view i completely changed my opinion on him and i think i read this within a day it was just so so intriguing to read from his point of view and then after that i read the second book this book was like 3.5 stars i don't know i felt like this one was worse than the first book but around like 70 percent through the book it started getting good because a lot of it i feel was just juliet feeling sorry for herself and like you have the right to feel sorry for yourself she has had a crap life she deserves to feel sorry for herself but i feel like there was just a lot of it to the point where it started getting annoying because she was just starting to be really selfish but later on in the book it does definitely get interesting and i think if you enjoyed the first book i think you should definitely read the second book and then just also give the third book a try i haven't read the third book yet but just give it a try and then after this you're supposed to read fracture me which is also in unite me and this is from adam's point of view which is the other love interest i actually haven't read this yet because i'm currently in the process of reading a different book before i start the third book so i'm keeping this novella for after that so i can kind of like refresh my memory but in adam's point of view i guess because i like briefly like scanned over the first page and this novella starts around like 80 percent through the second book so i'm just gonna read this after i've read the book i'm currently busy with to kind of just refresh my memory and then i'm gonna read the third book and then the last book that i read that i'm actually still in the process of reading is is Best Than the Movies by Lynn Painter. I have heard so many good things about this book and people saying it's their favorite book, it's the most adorable romance book, and I decided to give it a try. This book follows the main character, Liz, and I don't really know even how to explain it because I am 38 pages in. <laughs> but it's basically a enemies to lovers thing, childhood enemies to lovers, but like a really cute romance still because the main character, Liz, is obsessed with romantic comedies and there's a bunch of references in the book. Like at the beginning of each chapter, there's a reference to a romantic comedy and then also throughout the book there's references to songs and then at the end of the book there's a playlist apparently can this be like a rule when people write books to put a playlist at the end of the book i feel like it just makes me think about the book so much longer when there's a playlist is it just me but yeah and on the cover there's also a bunch of like pictures from very iconic scenes from romance movies so like here's the notebook i've never watched the notebook but i know this is from the notebook i'm not sure what this is from but i know like a whole scene with like the boom box i believe this is from dirty dancing and then these two i'm not really sure about but so far i'm enjoying it but like it's definitely predictable personally i just like books where you don't really know where it's going like it still seems like the book has a future but you're not sure where it's going exactly and this you can just already kind of tell where it's going and usually with a lot of books that would make me bored extremely quickly it's predictable and usually i would put it down by now but 
The thing that's keeping me going is the way the characters talk to each other. Their sense of humor and just, it feels very realistic. Like, I don't know, I just love the way they talk to each other, not even like just Wes and Liz, which is the couple basically in the book. Not the couple, but they end up being... You get the point. It's not just them. It's like all of the characters. The way they just talk to each other is so interesting to read about. And a lot of my annotations so far is just jokes people have made or like flirty comments people have made. But yeah, so far I'm really enjoying this. And hopefully I finish this within the next week because I've been reading it for almost a week. And I've just been like kind of busy so I haven't been able to read. But I really do want to get back into this book. And that is everything that I read in January. I would also do like a... February TBR now, but I'm not really sure what I'm reading in February. Like I know I'm gonna read the novella in Adam's point of view and then probably Ignite Me, which is the third Shaft Me book over there. But after that, I'm not even sure what I'm gonna read. I just buy books as I go, like what I feel like reading. I don't really know, but but thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Comment the is there a milkshake emoji? Comment if there is a milkshake emoji, otherwise I'll find something that looks like a milkshake. And let me know in the comments if there's any other book videos you guys would like to see. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.